everybody welcome back to the channel um, I was trying to rack my brain for ideas to do for a video and I figured since it's the end of the year why not do like a recap of the comic book movies we got this year and so um, yeah that's what I want to do for this video and kind of give them like a rating and you know just discuss them since it's the end of the year um, oh and if you haven't seen any of these movies um, I will be talking about things that could potentially be spoilers, so just a heads up for that. I will be discussing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Justice League, and Star Wars The Last Jedi. So most people have probably already seen all of those except maybe Star Wars since it just came out. But just a heads up in case you haven't seen those movies, I will be discussing things that will probably be considered spoilers. So just a warning before I get started. Okay, um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, I went in expecting to enjoy the movie. I enjoyed the first one, um, not any more or less than any other Marvel movie. Um, but for this one, for Volume 2, I liked the story better. Um, I liked the fact that we learned more about, um, I'm just going to call him Star-Lord, <laughs> his uh, family and what he thought he knew about his parents. And I liked the fact that um, his biological father ended up being the villain in the movie. I thought that that was a cool story. I was glad to actually see like a very powerful villain. Um, sometimes Marvel villains tend to be a little bit watered down. And they're not necessarily bad villains. It's just, you know, sometimes you want to see like a really powerful villain, you know. And so I liked that about that movie. Um, of course... <laughs> These Guardians movies are very comical and, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with being funny and having fun and everything like that. Um, but, you know, sometimes with certain movies, with certain subject matter, it can get to the point where it gets a little tiring and it's kind of like, okay, we don't have to have a joke for everything in every scene, in every situation. And so with those movies, that's kind of how I felt about them. Like, I feel like there's just, I'm not a spoof movie fan. And to me, those movies are like one step away from being a spoof movie. And so with Gar with volume two, especially, I kind of just, by the end of the movie, I was starting to get a little just tired of like the over the top comedy. Um, but nevertheless, good story and you know, not a bad movie. I just wish that some of the more serious parts didn't in, didn't have to have jokes and stuff that I consider to be jokes. And I know I've mentioned this a few times in videos and I've had debates with people on it on Twitter about it. So, you know, whatever. Not trying to bag on it because it's a Marvel movie or anything like that. I do watch Marvel movies. I do enjoy them. I just wish sometimes the serious moments for Guardians, I know there are other Marvel moments in Marvel movies that are purely serious, and I appreciate that. But in terms of this movie, I just wish there wasn't so, so much. And that the serious moments would have been more enjoyable, would have been better if there weren't jokes involved or humor. That's just my opinion. So, um, for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I think on a scale of 1 to 10, I would... I think I would give this movie a six and a half out of ten, just in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's what I would give that movie, I think. I think that's fair for, for me. Um, next we have Wonder Woman, so DC movie. Um, I was super excited for this movie, I think a lot of people were, just for the fact that we've never had a Wonder Woman movie. And, you know, we got to see her introduced in Batman v Superman. And um, even people that didn't really like that movie still mentioned that they liked her a lot, Gal Gadot, as Wonder Woman. And I liked her, and every time I see her on in a movie um, in the DC franchise, I like her more. So um, this was cool because we got to get her origin story. She was very different from the Wonder Woman that we saw in BVS. She was not experienced. She was naive. 
she was um she didn't even know who she truly was and where she came from um you know because of what her mom had told her she'd never experienced the world of man before um she only knew themiscara and that's all she knew and so it was awesome to see her um learn more about herself learn more about her power you know learn about how flawed man really is uh, mankind and you know she was just awesome she was yeah i totally love her she's inspirational she's strong she's confident and not just her like all the women on themiscara it was awesome to see all of that come to life um yeah just totally amazing hands down favorite scene is the no man's land um and then something i didn't expect also was of course um finding out that i mean i expected that what her mom had told her about how she came to life was probably not true because of dialogue that we heard in the trailers that her mom was saying she can never find out who she really like what she really is and so we're expecting to find out something that you know special about her um of course her mom told her that she sculpted her from clay and that zeus brought her to life which is what happens in the animated movie but really when she finds out who Ari, the who aries really is um sir patrick she you know he tells her that sword is not the god killer you are the god killer you know zeus created you for this purpose and i I definitely wasn't expecting that so i thought that was a cool twist and awesome to find out that she was directly created by zeus so she's even more powerful than we all thought than she thought even so yeah i just it's a beautiful movie um it's very rewatchable for me i i really enjoy it every time i watch it and yes this movie does contain humor and lightheartedness and stuff like that compared to the previous movies bbs and man of steel um and Suicide Squad, but it's different because, I mean, you expect it in this movie because, you know, she's it's like her fish out of water type of thing and, you know, stuff. so, yeah, I just, I love Chris Pine and Steve Trevor, I mean, yeah, I just, I really love the movie, it's great. <laughs> so, for this movie, I would give it a 9 out of 10. That's my rating for Wonder Woman. Um, let's move on to Spider-Man Homecoming, which came out a few weeks later after Wonder Woman. Um, I was somewhat disappointed with this movie. I just expected it to be a lot better than it was, in my opinion. Um, it's just... I know it's hard not to compare this movie to the sony spider-man movies because i always really liked those movies i always liked the toby Maguire movies the andrew garfield movies and this movie i don't know from the trailers i just thought it was going to be better like for me the best part of the movie was vulture the played by michael keaton the villain um i thought he was a great villain um probably one of my favorite marvel villains so far and I mean, there's nothing wrong with Tom Holland. He's a good actor, and he does fine as Peter Parker, Peter Parker and as Spider-Man. I just felt like when we first saw him in Civil War, when Tony went to recruit him, he was, like, very skilled. He really knew how to use his powers, and it showed in that movie. Um, and then I felt like with Spider-Man Homecoming, kind of just took a step backwards, and it wasn't supposed to be an origin movie so i don't understand why they did that um i understand that he's very young he's in high school he's like barely he's like 15 he you know tony gives him this suit that he doesn't really know how to use but in civil war he did know how to use it and so in this movie since most of it takes place after civil war i just don't understand why they made it like that um how he was clumsy and fumbling around and didn't seem, I mean, he's like afraid of heights and I understand he's still a human being, but 
I don't know. I just, I thought that there would be a little bit more epicness to the movie. And maybe if they hadn't shown the scene of him pulling the fairy together, trying to pull the fairy back together, that would have been an epic part for me. But since they showed like the most of the scene in the trailer, it ruined it for me. Like as soon as that part came on in the trailer, I mean, during the movie, in the movie theater, I was mad because it's like, we already saw what happened in the trailer. We know that you know, Iron Man comes to save the day and takes his suit and all that. So, I don't know. Maybe that's what ruined some of it for me, is that the trailers just showed way too much. It's like you could pretty much put the whole movie together from the trailers. And the only plot twist I didn't see coming was finding out that um, the villain, Vulture, was um, Liz's dad, his love interest in the movie. So, that was the only thing I didn't see coming, which was a cool twist, but... I would have liked a little bit more to be left out of the trailer so that we could have seen it in the movie for the first time. But, you know. And I just, I wanted to see him, like, swinging through the buildings and, you know, saving his love interest. He saved her one time in the movie and it wasn't even just her. It was her and a group, of the kids, all the students in the elevator. And I don't know. I just, I expected a little bit more, I guess. And, you know... After waiting several years for Marvel to finally bring Spider-Man into their universe, it's like, I just expected it to be a little bit better. But um, for that movie, I'm going to give it the same as I gave Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. You know what? For Now that I say that, I'm going to change Guardians of the Galaxy to a 7. Yeah, it's better than Spider-Man Homecoming. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so next, uh, Thor Ragnarok. I think this movie was exactly what everyone expected it to be based on the trailers and what we heard about it um, before it came out. Um, it was, of course, everyone said it was fun, funny, and it was. It was definitely funny. Um, it was a very different Thor than we've seen in the first two Thor movies, which I liked, by the way. I liked the first two Thor movies, especially the first one. I liked those movies a lot. Um, so I didn't mind that they weren't super funny, but they still had their humor, you know, and I like those movies, so personally, I didn't need a parody of Thor to enjoy Thor. I liked him the way he was before, but I know that, you know, they all wanted to do something a little different, which is fine, and be, you know, have fun with the character and stuff like that. Um, I think this movie had some cool elements as far as Things that you maybe weren't expecting until you saw the movie, such as um, finding out, and Thor even found out too, that Hela is really his sister. She's the firstborn of Odin, and so technically she is the rightful heir to the throne, you know? But, you know, it was cool to hear all about her backstory and how her and Odin, you know, were taking over these other realms and kingdoms and stuff, and he locked her away, and, you know, all that whole thing. It was a cool story. Um... It was different to see Thor looking different <laughs> with a different look. Um, I don't know. I just, I, oh, definitely favorite part was the end during the final battle. The whole third act was probably my favorite part of the movie. Um, when Thor becomes like super overpowered um, by, you know, the lightning is coming in everywhere out of his body and... You know, he realizes that he doesn't need his hammer to be powerful because he is the power. And I liked that about this movie that he, I like him, I like him seeing, I like seeing him use his hammer because that's Thor. But, you know, it was cool to see um, him be so powerful without it against his most powerful villain so far. And Kate Blanchett was definitely great as um, Hela great villain um but I didn't ever feel like she was going to defeat Thor and I kind of wanted to feel that um you know and again some of the jokes were just too much for me at some point so sometimes I genuinely laugh I thought it was really funny you know but it's just sometimes it's like less is more so but good movie definitely not a bad movie at all um so I'm going to give this movie a seven and a half out of ten um, so, Justice League. Mm, mm, mm. 
bittersweet to have this Justice League movie. So much happened just for this movie to be released. And I think knowing all of the drama and all the stuff that was going on, I think it, I think it prevents a lot of us from enjoying the movie as much as we could have not knowing all the stuff that was going on before it came out. Having said that, it's also, there's also so many, there's also like amazing things about that I love about this movie. Um, I mean, I talked about it in my Justice League review movie, uh, our uh, review video. So of course, you all know I could not wait for Superman to come back. That was definitely my favorite part of the movie. Um, his return, taking on the Justice League, oh my god. That whole part was just, I loved it. Um, favorite part of the movie, for sure. And I love, you know, the team dynamic, the team interactions. I thought the cast did great. Um, yeah, they all did great. It just, love the Flash, for sure. Can't wait to see him again. Can't wait to see Aquaman's movie next year. And learn more about him um, and see Atlanta more of Atlantis and all that good stuff so that's probably one of the best things about this movie is that um, you know the characters are done very well and it makes you look leaves you looking forward to what's to come um, I'm not gonna get into all the drama and details because I've already done that in past videos and so You've already heard what I have to say about it, and if not, you can go back and watch those videos if you're interested. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, it's just it's bittersweet to have this movie, and I just I would love to see what we did not get to see um, in terms of Snyder's movie and you know what he originally had planned. But anyway, I don't want to get on rambling about it. So for this movie, I'm going to give it a hmm. I think I'm going to give this movie a 7.5 out of 10 for Justice League. Um, before the movie came out, I thought I'd be giving it a 9 out of 10, but, you know, oh well, what are you going to do? So, last but not least, um, Star Wars The Last Jedi. My last video is a review of this movie, so um, I won't go into too much detail since I just did a video about it, but overall I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I can understand, though, some negatives, um, some of the things that... Um, people might be having issue with like some of the things with Luke Skywalker and even Mark Hamill was not too fond of some of the things that they wanted to do with his character but you know didn't ruin the movie for me um, probably my favorite things as I mentioned in my review video were the interactions between Kylo Ren and uh, Rey and you know what does all that mean hopefully we'll find out in the next movie um, <laughs> But Kylo Ren, he's a great villain. Adam Driver does awesome. He has the perfect voice. I mean, you know, he just, he, he's awesome. I loved seeing his character arc and his evolution in this movie, um, especially from where we first saw him in uh, The Force Awakens. So, yeah. Um, he was awesome as a villain, and it was, I mean, it was a good movie. It was an overall a good movie. Um, I enjoyed it. So, um, I think this movie I'm going to give, um, the same, I would say a seven and a half out of ten. Um, yeah, not a bad movie, just, I've never been, like, a diehard Star Wars fan, so for me, not being a huge Star Wars person, for me to enjoy it as much as I did, you know, that's a good thing. So, that is my recap of the 2017 comic book movies that we got. Um, let me know what you guys thought of these movies, which one was your favorite, your least favorite, um, yeah, all that stuff, which one are you looking forward to next, um, as always, check out the links in the description, and, um, listen to, you know, if you haven't listened to the latest episode of the podcast that I'm on, that, dis that link is in the description as well, and read my first story on vocal media, my next one will be up tomorrow, uh, my next story, so I'll have that link on my next video but um in the meantime thanks for watching guys like comment share subscribe and we'll see you next time